Welcome back to part two of my chat with Garth Wood. In part one, Garth talked us through what happened that led him to being locked up in prison. Now we're going to talk about the impact on not just Garth, but also his family, his experience in prison, and hopefully the lessons that he's learnt from those experiences. Welcome back, Garth. Thanks, mate. Appreciate your honesty. It's not an easy, easy subject. Yeah, it isn't. But, um, it's true as it can be. You know, yeah. jail doesn't hide nothing. Everyone gets caught out in there and emotions are thrown up and down. And, uh, yeah, I think families are the ones that suffer. Yeah. Spe- speaking on, on family, uh, your old man uh, reached out to me through uh, Johnny Lewis yep. when you were inside just after you got locked up. And he wanted to uh, catch up for a coffee, and uh, I'm not sure if he told you, but um, I, I, I met him a couple of, couple of times after, and talking about what you're going through, and he, he just wanted to get my take on it, yep. having having seen the uh, Thank you. Seen, seen the system. Look, at that, look, it was was a pleasure. Yeah, it's uh, I, I've known you. I I was shocked and disappointed when I heard that uh, you got locked up. Disappointed for you, and that I thought the life was heading in the right direction. Yeah. And I, I'd met your uh, I'd met your father and your, uh, your your mother before, and they're they're great people, and uh, I I really enjoy their company. But um, so Johnny uh, set up a meeting with your your dad, and uh, we had a uh, sat down, had a coffee, and what surprised me was how broken he appeared to be. Yeah, like and it was yeah, we we talked about what you're going through and and all that, and yeah, the genuine concern of the father like Barry would have, have for his son being in prison. And it was killing him, I think, because he's a he's a tough... You know, yeah, he's a tough t- man. Tough guy, and, uh, yeah, he, he's a person that would sort things out himself, but this is where... Yeah, he he doesn't show many emotions. Even I could hear it in his voice on the phone calls inside, and especially when I got... The, yeah, there was a time when I was at Cessnock, and they did the video. Yeah. Caught, I could see him, and that, that's what broke my heart. And I had to go back to the cell and just constantly thinking about him, worrying and panicking. Yeah. When it, I must have aged him that much in the in the space of four months that when I was inside, that really took a big toll on me. And uh, I owe him and mum big time. Yeah. And I'll never put him in that situation again. Yeah, because I, 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 I saw the impact and uh, and Johnny for that matter too. Yeah, like he, he cares for him. There's a lot yeah. of people. He's with, a uh, second father to many men, but yeah, especially he's like another father. He's an as well. Yeah, and I, I could see both of them and, and the advice I gave, not that it was much help, but I, I, I said to Barry, just make sure you look after yourself because uh yeah, the worst thing Garth would feel is if something happened to you, why uh why That's exactly what was going through my head every day I woke up. Yeah. yeah. And we, we also said and, and this was another part of the conversation and this was sort of coming coming from me and I said, Look, this is a low point, but perhaps it might be the wake up call that you, you need. Like yeah. You were, you were sort of skirting around the edges and uh, you've fallen off a cliff here and that might have been the wake-up wake up call. Well, mate, it was exactly that. Um, when I got to really find, or well, I wouldn't say find a home in jail, but, you know, make the most of it and just, well, I could be here. You know, the sad thing was the more I got talking to the, the barristers and like that, no, you can't believe everything they say, but, they reckon the prosecutors were gunning for me. They really wanted to make an example of me, and they'll they'll ask him for six years. What, what mm. I could not imagine any of that. Maybe the lawyer was talking it up, trying to pump his own tyres up, but he got me off. You know, you just don't know what to believe of the system, and how I was just never been convicted and thrown straight to jail, and then they really wanted to go on with it. So, looking back, I count my blessings, my count, count my lucky stars, but um. Yeah, just the, the torment that I put mum and dad through and my girl and my kids. I even, I miss my my eldest's debut with the NRLW, which is a big thing for me because we're yeah. a very sport, sporty family and she's a very good competitor and she's an athlete in herself. And the fact that I wasn't, and I rung her one day from, I was at Park Lee because uh, the comp was starting. And she goes, oh, you ring me at all the right times. And I said, what do you mean? And she said, uh, I'm signing a contract with the Roosters. So yeah. just like now when I'm going to be tearing out had a moment inside and had a cry, so had a big toll on me. Not being there because I'm a dad. 
and I'm a protector. Yeah, so you don't really understand who who is who's actually suffering. You know, you think, yeah, yeah it's quite selfish. I don't know. It's it's hard to get away from the guy. You know what I mean, that that's that's the uh, the confusing or conflicting part, isn't it? That's all about protecting protecting family, and and I get that. And then you've done what you consider is yeah. You know, standing up for people that uh yeah you love and then you're hurting the people that you love because of your actions so yeah, exactly. that, that's a it's a difficult one when your family came out to visit you in prison who who was the first one that came out to see you i think it was my brother yeah, yeah it was my brother parkley and it was embarrassing yeah you're in uh, a jumpsuit done like volleys you're actually sitting in uh like so before you go into the cell oh not the cell the visit room, everyone's in this little cell, 35 blokes, full of BO, ego, bravado. Yeah. And I actually witnessed one big flogging in there one time when I was, there's no, come on, we're going to go. I was just dog shot and blokes, punch the shit out of him. And then all these hyenas on the wall waiting for whoever to jump in to back him up. Or if the bloke got the better of him, fucking towel him up. So I remember going back to my cell and, ringing me old man and just letting him know that I can't promise you I'm not going to fucking whack anyone if they whack me because it was fucking scary. You know what I mean? It's... Well, that that was, you know, in the, in the chats I had with your dad, that was a fear and you, you raised it in part one that uh, he was worried that uh, you're not going to take a backward step yeah. and you might get yourself into more trouble. Just because it's evil. Well, yeah. You see, you're in this, it wouldn't be much bigger than this room and there's 30 blokes to get in this holding cell before they go to visit everyone and everything's reputation and don't let this bloke look at you bump into me or maybe you got a someone's got a beef for someone you know outside or they've had a phone call everyone's so what's the word sensitive you know they just, just spoke to their missus and she's situation. not talked to them one little bump and it's, it's kicking off yeah so it's very eerie feeling i remember i was sitting in the wall all the time just waiting for someone to bump me and didn't happen, but you know, there's a big chance that it could just kick off it. Someone could have a stab you or yeah. hit you from behind and then jump on your head. Living in the, living in that environment, you're going to change too. If you spend too long in that environment, For sure. I, I, you become that. Uh, you've got to be that the, beast. The, yeah, alert for anything, any time. Yeah. Um, Nathan coming in there must have been hard for him. Yeah, yeah, it was your brother in, inside, and he he's a tough guy. And he, yeah, the big brother, and just be asking me, you. "Is anyone what's going on?" And I said, "You know, it's funnily enough, nothing's happened. They put me to head sweeper, or one of the sweepers, and the, I was blessed to be put into that pod. It was a working pod where I don't think there was much drug addiction. Everyone that was in the pod was more or less knew how to serve their time and make sure that they stayed. How do you put it? You know." on the right path yeah. to doing time. You know, <laughs> isolation can either bend you over and fuck you, or if you can make the most of it and do your time proper, uh, you can stay in arms more or less. But it's so difficult. Like I said, people sensitive to what's going in and outside of jail. They probably had a bad phone call with their mum or their missus and things just kick off. Yeah, it's not so much what's going for you; it's everyone around the, you as well. People around you. It is a volatile uh, situation. Yeah. First time your parents came in to see you. Dad didn't come for a while, which I understood. He couldn't deal with looking at me. Yeah. And now I'm sure that's what I was going through. I think the first time mum and dad come was I got moved to Cessna. Yeah. Which that was the Bronx. It I mean, Parkley was Parkley was. More heavy drug addiction, mental, from what I saw. Because when I went to the work compiler, it was just most of the people in the work compiler were pretty clean. And the fact that I was a sweeper there, a little bit of royalties, you know, look after the food, put people in rooms, the screw more or less not favoured you, but you get a little bit more say. Yeah. They come out and this and that. By the time. They must have heard one of the phone calls of me dad when I come back from I saw one or that kicked off in that holding cell before before I visit and I just said to him, Oh keep asking me not to do anything. He said, 
I said something like, you don't know what the fuck I'm going through here. I said, if I have to whack someone, I will. I'm not going to end up a veggie. Someone's going to jump on me fucking head. Like I just saw a bloke happen just then. And four o'clock a.m. in the morning after I got the phone, I bzzzed, wood, escort. And I'm like, what? Escort? Like, what the fuck? I didn't know what an escort yeah. was. And I had to get on a truck and go to Cessnock to a totally new fucking jail. And I was just thinking, oh, here we go. I just made myself at home here more or less. And I'm going to have to fucking yeah. start from scratch again and fucking prove myself or just stick to myself and train. And, this and, and same thing sort of fucking happened. It took me a week. You start, when you go to Cessnock, you start on the ground level with another person inmate where I wasn't with an inmate at Cessnock. I had my own private fucking space. Walked in there, it was like a jungle. I had to spend three nights with a bloke. I didn't know. Papua New Guinea and bloke, he wasn't a bad bloke. He knew people I knew, he played for more pipe. Then you go from the ground level to the top level. It's like the food chain, and then you get to the middle level, which is the five star, more or less. Yeah. Who knows if it's five star there, but you've got to start from scratch again, improve yourself, and then the screws get to know who you are, and you try and say, can I get in a cell by myself? It finally happened. So for two and a half weeks, just training in my cell, not training out, out in the yard. People have a look here and think, who's this? Can't. So I was just like sticking to myself. And what I'm just trying to get the mind sense there. If you, if you went out in the yard and started training, it might be you yeah, putting up fault. a challenge. Yeah, my fault. Who's this cunt? Who's he yeah. thinking he's fucking doing chin-ups, push-ups, he's running. So I thought, you know, I'll just play it, here by, play it day by day and just stick to myself and then, Got talking to blokes, a couple of people recognised who I was and then there's some people from the neighbourhood, a couple of blokes at Maroubra who knew me. But I still just stayed to myself and um, after a while, the screw said to me, uh, are you interested in a sweeper here? Which is a funny thing. You take on everyone else's fucking problems where you can have a run-in with everyone else or you just go, fuck it, I'll take it on. So I was there for nearly two and a half, three weeks. By this time, I got with a gang of people, not a gang, but people who worked out and wanted to train. And we'll, I'll tell you, I did some of the hardest training sessions in there. We did a lot of burpees, crawls, squats, push-ups, and it was like a big circuit, which went for nearly 40 minutes. And there was a couple of sessions I couldn't walk for the next couple of days. You know, I met, I met some so really Someone good... was running the session, one of the inmates. Yeah, there, I met a bloke. Hadn't seen for years in Glebe, and he was running the, the training session. It was pretty uh, hard yakka. Um, but I met some really good people in jail. There's also some evil fucking people as well, which I wouldn't care to fucking run to ever again. No different to be out here. There's some evil fucking people out here, yeah. but there's some terrific blokes you meet. Say that. There's a lot of people. We're all in there doing the same thing, hoping and praying. Did you get out? Yeah. What was going? Uh, I was going to ask that. What was going through your mind at that stage? Were you you thinking, shit, am I going to do six years or am yeah, I? Yeah, gonna... you listen to other people say, you know, uh, you'll go to Supreme. I'm thinking, what the fuck, Supreme? Mm -hmm. the fuck or when you go there, there's so many judges that say yes or no and this and that. You got a bigger chance. You'll probably get out of the Supreme Court. And then, by the time I got to it, Supreme, and then. Our lawyer. This, Brent, this was for bail. This you was for going, bail. They yeah. said, oh, you'll get Supreme, but that was going to cost me more money. And then they'd said, oh, they brought it forward. The actual um, uh, case is not going to be for three weeks. So fuck Supreme, stay in there for another three. I said, all right, save some money. And <laughs> when, when we're, when we're talking, crazy talking, fucking talking money, what, what sort of figures are we talking about? Because this is the other side of uh, the cost of... Uh, yeah, I Crying. think it was up to nearly 50,000 yeah. all up because I went to local and then knocked back and then went to the center, got knocked back there and then we were going for Supreme. And that money just goes down the dark hole, yeah, doesn't it? don't know how to play your desperation. So the whole system is a fucking joke. And uh, I haven't been involved in or got pinched that many times. This was my first thing. I'm sure, you know, there's other people who can tell you the hurdles that they've gone through and the amounts of money that they've I, I don't with. I don't think people appreciate yeah, defending cases. You you can throw away a quarter of a million dollars quite easily. 
And you're you're just talking about fifty thousand. You're trying to get out on bail. So, yeah, if you consider it was a, a trial for a couple of weeks, imagine uh, imagine the cost yeah, well, that would add up there. They know the desperation because they know the conditions that people are under, and yeah, they're willing to do anything to get out. So. Were you settling into the lifestyle? Were you, you was your mindset changing? Go, okay, well, this is this is my lot in life. <clears throat> this is I've just got to make the most. After a while, I'm not going to say jail's easy because it isn't, but um, it's a lot harder out here. I think yeah. you can get caught up with the wrong people, and you know you don't have to pay. You get your food pay uh, made for you. You wear the same clothes. You don't own your clothes. I just mate, I made it. When I got ended up getting to the bay, there was a bloke in there who was doing some heavy time, and compared to what I was doing, I was doing a cat connect compared to those blokes. But I just saw me being me, and I love training, I love motivating people. I got them, and we started. Oh, they started feeding off me in the fact that I was you know, my funny character, and I, I put little. I put we, little we, haven't, <laughs> we haven't tested that so you No, you look. wouldn't think I was. I think it was the next. Uh, you've you've got the best impersonations of people I've ever heard. But we we trained the house down, and I started motivating them. So oh, we got a challenge. Friday session was the fuck me up session, where you really had to push yourself. And by that time, my daughter Mia was playing for the uh, Roosters, so I had to really push myself to limits to try and give her the spirit to give make sure that she had a big game. So I let everyone know that you know we're gonna, we're gonna train our ass off Fridays. Asses hanging out your pants if you don't push yourself. Fuck is he's not training with me this and that. So everyone had to come to the fuck fuck me up session Friday. Is that, is that what you? That's what we called it. Yeah. yeah. So and because you weren't allowed to have any any weights or anything in there, it was always um what, what we were doing like piece push ups, chin ups, run and lap. Some fits that we were doing um, was all calisthenics and that. Yeah. Blokes were vomiting, yeah. and uh, if I if I if I couldn't put myself to the limit, I didn't think I, I thought I was doing me, um, cheating me or out of uh, and a good performance. So I was, yeah. I was play, all play connected with, yeah. to the spirits and okay. the fucking the, universe and that. You, you got you so, got to play with your mind. Yeah, I was really fucking that, myself uh, up. Unless I was just didn't think I was a uh, good enough dad because I was in here and I was missing all that shit. So I was really fucking myself up. I uh, trying uh, the parts of things. Uh, and with that, was that helping your mental well-being? It was. Well-being? It was keeping me sane yeah. and it was keeping me honest. Um, and I walked in there 94, 94 kilos. I walked at 83. So he said, jail's not good for you. I've, I've put <laughs> well, 10 years of my life, I reckon. Well, when, I, when you first got out, you looked like you are ready for a fight. It was, uh, and that's yeah, a, that's you were learning, mate. That's yeah. the mindset I had. That's the only thing I knew how to... When I come into a challenge in life, and most of my challenges have been in the sporting arena, football or boxing, to compare it to jail, I had to pretend I was in most of the time. I was in. Did you you think I would imagine for the blokes inside that, that they would have enjoyed training with you? Yeah, they loved it. Yeah, did you like like because you, you know what I what I really um, got to realize when I was in jail that you really just got to accept things. Meaning they shut those gates when you get locked in at two o'clock in the afternoon. There's nothing you can do about it. So you just got to accept it. And, and appreciation, appreciation that you got loved ones out there that, that are still trying to do their best to get you and phone calls. But funny thing was the f- it was shit house. But would only get an orange once a week, yeah. and I'd just save that orange right, and every right. every piece of it. Right outside when when I wasn't in jail, you didn't even look at an orange. Oh, you liked it. I just. The fact that you, the littlest thing you can just appreciate was just like you know, that it was just how it's humbling, just doing time and being locked away in a cell and just appreciate you did that. Anyway, it's it's hard to say. But. I think you're saying it very well there, Garth, and it's interesting that you can identify that because you you could go in there and just. My biggest concern when I heard you, you've gone in there and, and speaking to your, your your father and others that uh, yeah are close here was that you're going to come out bitter and go I oh, stuff this I, uh, what are they doing and just I, I'm a victim and bl- yeah. blame the world. 
And uh, to me, it looks like you've accepted, okay, I did the wrong thing. I've, in my own mind, I know why I did it, but it's the wrong thing. I put my hand up to that. And you're identifying the positives that, that it's changed you, change you for the better, perhaps. Long way. I realize that, geez, you know, well, you talk about sliding doors. One more punt, he hits his head. There's blokes in there. I'm never going to see daylight again. I've been blessed. You know, you could be here one day and gone tomorrow. So, what I'm doing now, falling into a good job, second week of the job. And it's a new beginning. It's a new reset, you know, and I tell everyone that I love them, mm. which I always really did anyway. I was a quite emotional bloke, even though I'm a tough guy, but I take the time to, um, this Christmas, I wouldn't mind going away with my daughters and my girl. I'm going to try and get dad to come away for a weekend too. We just need to spend a lot more time with one another. We just never know what's around the corner. Yeah, yeah. It makes you it makes you appreciate life. It sure did. You had some conversations with your family when they, I would imagine that's worry, 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 they get you out there. Was there any conversations, Garth, if you ever do this to us again? Yeah, well, Baz has put it on me. Off the piss. If I find you're on the piss, fuck, I'm going to talk to you again. And I can understand. Yeah. So I wasn't pissed when I went out and sorted this sort of that situation out. But you know, it was a big part of where I was, mindset, yeah. leading up to it. You know what I mean? Just. Well, when, when, when you, you're on the drink, there's that potential for you to, to make a, a yeah, stupid you got a chip on your shoulder. Stupid. And it's not decision. hard to get into a fucking confrontation. Yeah. Especially in a pub. Or yeah. hung over, yeah. nasty fucking whinging fucking bloke that you can be. Yeah, yeah. yeah when when you're on and the overreacting, when you're on the piss. No, I I know, and you, without naming them, you know the people I, I I speak to that know know you well, and uh, all of them have said that they, they hope you you stay off the stay off Yeah, the, no, uh, it's a problem. No one's uh bulletproof. It's hard socialize with today and what's going on around. Um. You've got to be selfish and you've got to be yeah, mature, which is slowly but surely. I'm 45 now. I'm almost there. <laughs> you're, you're running out of time, yeah. Garth. <laughs> but if you, you give it a couple more decades again, don't worry. It's too late. You're yeah. going to change. But, uh, yeah, uh, hopefully it has uh, it has helped you change. So, well, look, mate, I want to be around here for as long as I can. My daughters, I want to be a grandfather eventually, and I want to share my maturity. <laughs> <laughs> My my war stories about not what not to do. But, uh, yeah, I just want to see my daughters and the young bloke Harley grow as uh, adults and their children and me, just like my dad, give my words of wisdom. Yeah, yeah, Be become that uh, good role model yeah. you, you want to. You're working now and uh, you, you're doing some... Uh, uh, we were going to catch up on uh, Monday night, but uh, I, I would like, have loved to come seeing your yeah, show. Yeah, we're, we're doing a doing Mates a show. With Jeff as well. Yeah, in the, invited along to, and uh, I was saying I, I thought it was good that you didn't turn up, that you you had the job because it would have been easy to go. Oh, yeah, change a shift, and you said no, work comes first. And I in thought, the past, well, I very easily have a day off, but um, uh, job where I'm at now, it's a pretty good coin. I'm working afternoon shift. Yeah, labouring. Maybe, yeah, I'm loving the fact that I've got money in my pocket and I'm providing. Yeah. A bit of a bill to pay for Bazza too. <laughs> so he sorted me out. <laughs> can't, can't he write that off for us? Oh, okay. So, no. I can't thank my mother and father um, for always, but for my ups and downs in life, and I'd definitely repay them and uh, I won't be going down that road again. Yeah. Well, you, you've you've given them some highs, but yeah, you you've taken, <laughs> taken them to some lows. Uh, I, I still, the red. still remember when you were going through the uh, the Mundine fights and that, and I've never seen a prouder prouder yeah, well, at the time. He was he was loving it. So he deserves it. He's been great. What's in prison? You talked about the addicted uh, addictions and uh, the junkies and and that that you came across in prison. Did did that shock you? The yeah, it did. It? I remember. I think there were seven blokes in Parkley. Yeah. They were all on the heavy shit. And they all shit the syringe. There was one bloke who had AIDS. And he was the last bloke that was supposed, supposed to blast it. Yeah. So that just shows you 
what they're willing to do for the addiction. Just rolling Paul Sharon, the, uh, sorry. Roll, rolling the dice, isn't it? It's crazy. It's, it's, it's crazy. And you, you see the, the damage. Did you, Have you seen that out on the street or did you appreciate it more when no. you saw when the, the ones that are hit? The oh, as a kid, Lord Lou and that, uh, you'd see a lot of it. And you do, I would never believe that it could happen in publicly. You know, given well, I think it was more, it's no no, no longer privatised. Yeah, I yeah. think it was just write your own ticket, do whatever you want in there, and nothing was actually policed. So, yeah, the extremes of drug addiction in there were fucking mind boggling. It was fucking crazy. Right, what uh, what advice would you give to uh, young guys that, uh, yeah? Going down a path, I'm not talking the addiction here, but getting yep. yourself into trouble because you, yeah, too many blokes I, I see get charged with assault, this or that, and uh, uh, I, I see like with boxing actually helps. I, I think you'd be worse if you didn't box because you, you'd probably be angry and, and yeah, rate I, I, yourself higher. Or you might think, no, well, look at where you are, mate. I promise you, given the fact that you know to hurt someone, there's been many a times that I said, mate, please fuck, go away. My talking has got me out of having to hold my hands up. Yeah. Maybe because I'm intimidating or maybe people know I have a reputation. But people get away with a lot more than you would have maybe if you didn't know how much harm you can put on someone. Yeah. And that's where the discipline comes, knowing that you could hurt someone. And even when I was uh, training the young kids at Bowman and PCYC, we had a rule. I had kids come in and you could pick up on them being bullied. And then I took a little bit more time to them, and, and then I'd get DMs from their mother or their father saying, "Little Johnny, it's been the best thing for him. He, he's changed. He's he's come out of his skin." But I always say, "Said to him, if I find out that you're fighting outside of the gym or at school, or you're picking on people, I'll cut you from the class." And it worked. Yeah. And sad thing was, I wasn't a bully, but you know, I should have. Use the same rules for myself and, and your own, own, swap it up. <laughs> own, own advice. Yeah. Hey, have a listen to this wise fella. Exactly. Ah, I, I never, never switched on. Your, your daughter playing um, in the uh, women's rugby league. The Roosters, yeah. That she, must be a proud moment. It was. Um, it was one of my favourite times. Well, I've been the parent of several. Just given the fact, that, um, eighteen months before she suffered an ACL, yeah, bad injury. And uh, she was on top of the world before that, playing rugby sevens, and um, just to to get picked in the Australian team, and then she suffered that injury, so she had a setback. But she did all of it herself. The recovery got us stronger, faster, mentally toughness. You know, she's a competitor. And then at the last minute, she didn't have a team in RLW, and then. When everything like this happened, that phone call that she she'd been selected and she debuted. Not only that, she scored three tries. <laughs> so she's got a record for who's, the debut of NRLW of scoring the most tries on debut. When yeah. she signed again, and uh, yeah, she, she's a, she's a real competitor and she's got a good brain too. So she's not just a wing. I think she can play anywhere in the back line. So. Um, How how good is it with women's sport these yeah. days? Like, like, were you? Inside? I'd rather watch that. Than the men's, like, given the yeah. fact that they can pass from pass the ball from one side of the field to the other, chip and chase, and they even just the collisions. Yeah, and there's no mugging them. You know, like, they don't push and shove and like take each other on. It's just yeah, pat on the bum, well, good tackle. Yeah, you know I mean? just get the, on with it. The sportsmanship is uh, second to none, better than the blokes. Yeah, no, I think it's great across the board. Uh, what's happening with women, uh, women's sport? Tell me, when you were released. What was that like? What yeah. did that what, talk? Talk us through that. How it happened? When you found out? And when? Okay, the nightmare's over. I thought I was going home. I thought I was getting back on the track at one stage because, man, I wasn't prepped at all. When, when was I? Um, I was saying self defence, given the fact that what happened. Yeah. And what happens with everything what happened was the police officer who reported everything the day of the incident. They said that he hadn't been at work, he'd been injured or something. So they were adjourn it. And I no way, I'm not going back. 
well, you got to do something to uh, my team. They said, oh, well, you'll have to plead guilty. And I said, what? Oh, well, don't plead guilty. You have to plead that you were too excessive when you hit you. And I said, all right. So they chucked me back and hold himself for another three hours. And then I come back and some lady wanted to report, wanted to interview me on the incident. Here I still was thinking I was pleading um, self-defense excessive. Mm. And I told her the story. She said, oh, that's not right. I said, what do you mean? She says, we've got here. Oh, well, I'll come back. And then given the fact that I didn't report, I uh, didn't mind didn't wait up to what she did. Uh, they chucked me back in the hole, so I thought I was going back on the trap. But then they saw it. Say, I'll do community service. So they yeah. said, all right, here's the ICA. So just the whole sh- not being prepped and embarrassed. We spoke about yeah. pleading, uh, playing in your desperation. and The newspapers were there. Uh, Your Honour. She talked to the, to the orders and she, the way she was saying it was like I was going back and I was going to serve. She goes, oh, maximum was six years for this and that. And at the last minute, she just dressed up. I'm looking at mum and dad. Dad's with his hands in his hands. Yeah. I started thinking I was going back on the track. I was just, the theatre was fucking crazy. Yeah. Um, damn, my lucky man. I'm giving the, you just don't know what's going on with the system or if yeah. you, on the right day, is she all right? You know, on the right day, is she got a personal disagreement with me, or she doesn't like boxes, or this and that. So you don't the just system, know what, what's The system, happen. in my experience, is by no means perfect, and uh, yeah, personal biases and and that do yeah, exactly. play. Whether that whether they like to accept it or not, that, that's the reality of the what the system is. But you pleaded guilty, and then uh, then you're released with intensive um, community service orders. Or? That's it. I'm- 20 month ICA. Yeah, yeah. And five year AVA against the victim, which is the best thing ever. Yeah, you got no problem there. Well, I've got no drama. I yep. would never want to see him ever again. Okay. Yeah, once I was released from court, I just. My girl wanted to get a cab and go home. I said, oh, no, I'm walking out. Oh, really? I said, okay. I need to walk home for me. She goes, I've got high heels on. I said, get your high heels off. You can walk with no shoes on. I said, I just love that I'm out. I said, so we walked from yeah. Downing Centre all the way where she lives. And actually, we went to feed first. I had a, a pink and steak. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, some chicken wings. Yeah, it was good. And then walked home from there and just soaked it up. It was just beautiful to be home, walk on the streets and in the street felt good yeah, yeah amazing we're not going to uh see you back here for a thing i catch killers garfwood story no chance. No chance can we can we do one if uh you get discovered as the actor that i think you are like you, you you've dabbled in acting i've seen yeah well there's some things shows. in the pipeline hopefully i'll get a call back but uh yeah let's hope something like um something to show you that you can Go from the penthouse to the shit house and the shit house back to the penthouse. Hopefully we can be back yeah, for we'll, that. We'll be back for <laughs> back for that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All, all right. Well, look, I really appreciate you coming on and, and being so open and honest. And I, I, oh, well, if it sends a message to the right people, and yeah, there's no, I say something. Be yourself. Because I was just taken. So the, the facts. <laughs> that's how it is. Yeah. Hey, you know, it's not good to be inside. You have to prove yourself. So you're a tough guy. Um, I don't believe in the uh, message. I just think you just looking back at what I did, I probably shouldn't have went down that road. But there's a lot of things I should have done differently. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to run away from the person that you are. Yeah, well, that's. Uh, I think that might be a good way to uh, to leave the podcast. But I'm sure people listen to it, and your your honesty it really rams home the point on uh, the choices we make in life and the consequences of it so thanks, thanks for coming on and uh yeah i'll uh i'll see you around uh, thanks for having me mate it's always a pleasure cheers thank you that was a really personal chat that i had with garth i think he was being open and honest and uh yeah clearly he's still struggling and it really came across that not only had he not only had he let himself down he'd let his family down and uh i sincerely hope he's learned his lesson there's a lot of people out there that give him a lot of support i can't but help like him I understand where those values come from that he has, but he realised times have changed and, uh, yeah, hopefully he will uh, 
realise that he's got to move on with his life and uh, achieve what I'm sure he can. Thank you.